Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In this one, I'm gonna go over an RBMK reactor which runs on 16 medium and rich plutonium fuel rod. And it shouldn't be that difficult to make in the early game because it doesn't use any moderated parts. And also, medium and rich plutonium is kinda easy to come by as it is obtained from depleting uranium. I'll also show you some of the modified versions I made for this in this world. So, yeah, timestamps will be in the description. And without any further ado, let's get straight into this video. Alright, before we getting into this build, I wanna show you something. I just loaded into this world with all three reactors running and you can see none of them actually exploded. That's cause all of these reactors, they run well below the meltdown temperature of medium and rich plutonium. Now, the modified version in which there are less boilers, uh, it is gonna run a bit hotter compared to this reactor that I'm showing you right now. That is why it produces more power. But still, the temperature reaches to like only a thousand degrees Celsius, which is well below the meltdown temperature for plutonium fuel rod. So that's that. And also in order to obtain the medium and rich plutonium, you can get it by depleting MOX plutonium fuel rods or simplest way is to deplete natural uranium or normal uranium in a Xernox reactor. Now this will give you the medium and rich plutonium nuggets, which you can then make into fuel rods. So yeah, not that difficult to make considering that you are going to make Xernox reactor way before you're gonna make an RBMK reactor. So that is how you're gonna get your hands on medium and rich plutonium. And now for the build. In the middle, we start with the moderator and surrounding it, we place down four fuel rods. Now once again, we get four moderators in the corner and on these moderators, we are gonna place down two more fuel rods. So that totals up to 12 fuel rods that we have placed like this. And now we place the moderators in the center and on this one we place down the final fuel rod and this will total up to the 16 fuel rods that we have in the reactor. So that's the structure done. Now we place down uh, 3 of the steam channels like this on each side so that's 12 steam channels in total. Now if you want to modify this then you can remove these two and then place down moderators in here. This will make the reactor run hotter. It will get you a bit more power however you can place down the steam channels like this this is the design i'm going with in this video so now you know how to modify it now on the external side here cover the entire reactor up with moderators as there are basically fuel rods in every single row and column of this reactor so you don't need to basically cover it entirely on the outside with these moderators like this and then to close off the neutron path we are going to place down reflectors on the entire perimeter of the reactor and with that done the neutron path all of the neutron paths should be completely closed so now to close off the top so that there is absolutely no neutron leakage we place down rbmk covers the transparent one on the fuel rods and the normal ones on all of the other columns and with that done the rbmk reactor should be ready it is going to look something like this next up we start with the piping work and this one is simple because the reactor is symmetric so we place down the pipes for water these first pipes are gonna be for water and uh, yeah if someone is watching the video of how to make an rbmk reactor for the first time in this mod then this part is going to help you for the ones who have made this reactor uh, well you have done this a thousand times already so placing down the steam connectors below the water pipe this will separate the water and the steam and finally ultra dense steam pipes which is what the reactor is going to run on ultra dense steam placed down like this and we are going to connect them in a similar way like we did with the water pipes so connecting these all like this and set them to ultra dense steam and with that the piping work below the reactor is all complete now we start with uh, the foundation and many of you say that I never use the construction wand. So yeah, here's me using the construction wand in order to set up this 4x4 four four chunk area. And the outer part is going to be two grid tiles. The middle one is going to be concrete tiles, which is how I like to set my foundations for these reactor videos. And now we need four Leviathan steam turbines all touching each other. The first one set to ultra dense steam, second one to super dense, third one to dense steam and the fourth one is normal steam. This way they can share all of the steam without placing any pipes between them. Finally, a single cooling tower can do the trick here. So I'm going to place down one cooling tower and I always use paintable ducts in this video. So this time I decided to do something different by using the steel grate 
and uh, yeah connecting them like this so the steel grid with the pipe below it looks pretty cool and for the connections i use the paintable fluid ducts so it looks clean like this and i'm going to repeat the same process for ultra dense steam as we did for the low pressure steam and for water we are gonna do something a bit different so first things first i am going to cover up the base of the reactor so it doesn't look like it's just floating in the air and with that done now we can make a dedicated port for water on one of the sides and then this port can get connected to the cooling tower and that will complete the loop so here's the water port looks pretty cool and connecting this like this with the uh, gauge to see how much water we are consuming and that's that for the final step connect the power output of every turbine and now we are ready to store power and uh, yeah linking the rbmk to the console and then select all of the boilers and set them to ultra dense steam finally using the water pipe that we connected between the rbmk reactor and cooling tower we can fill the reactor up with water this will also show us if the piping work we have done is correct or not finally placing down medium enriched plutonium fuel rod in all of the 16 fuel channels and once that's done in order to start this reactor you only need to replace two adjacent fuel rods with any neutron source here i am using radium 226 beryllium and with these two rods you can kick start the entire reactor so once that's done now we'll see the temperature go up same goes for the flux and very soon we should start producing steam there we go so now we are producing ultra dense steam and this power level should cap out at nearly very close to 30 million hg per second or 30 mega hg per second and uh, yeah it will slowly and steadily keep on rising now each cooling tower, the big cooling towers can handle 200,000 millibuckets per second of water in low pressure steam. We are well below that, so a single cooling tower should do the trick here. Now I'm going to make a spent fuel pool drum here, as uh, we will need to cool down the depleted fuel rods that we are going to get out of it for further processing. So this is not the most efficient design, but I was kind of limited on space, so this is what I went with. Ideally, you want all four sides to be covered with water and there we are slowly approaching that 30 mega hg per second however i think we are not gonna get to that uh, we will start falling down but anyways that's that uh, close to 30 mega hg per second is what you're gonna get with the modified design you can get a bit more if you use less boilers which i have already showed you and all of the remaining boilers which were running for over an hour when i was making this are just for they are working just fine so let's take this fuel rod for example uh, it has depleted over 25%. We cool it down in a spent fuel pool drum. And once it has cooled down in your crafting inventory, you can get the pellets out of it. Now, the more depleted the pellets are, the better. You process them in a silex using infrared radiation. And this is going to give you short lived nuclear waste for plutonium 240 and plutonium 239. Now, using this short lived nuclear waste, you can directly process it in a silex. And this will give you plutonium 241, some bismuth, iodine, neptunium, cesium, things like that. Or what you can do is basically take this waste and decay it further and then process it to give you lead, bismuth, stuff like that. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. You found it helpful and learned something from it. If you did, do smash that like button and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content like this. I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, peace out and stay safe my dudes.